Hello and welcome to Microdesk's demonstration on the reinforcement tools with inside Revit structure. My name is Josh Gianfrido. I'm a solutions specialist, structural discipline here at Microdesk, and I'll be providing you the demonstration. So let's jump right in. Okay, so I've switched over to a model that I generated very similar to the one that was demonstrated for you guys. However, this one was started with a structural template. Uh, what that allows is for the concrete items to inherit ACI cover based on that ACI code. So you'll see when we get into the walls, there's a little more cover on the exterior part of the wall than the interior part of the wall. Uh, you can change that and it's controlled by the individual concrete elements, not the rebar. All right, so getting into uh, plan view, we can see I have a couple section cuts and I'm gonna start off putting rebar in a solid wall and then we'll look at putting in rebar in a wall with a, with a door. So going to the solid wall, that's going to be my west wall. I'll go to that and I'll go on my structure tab, reinforcement panel, I have the area reinforcement tool. I'll go to that, select the wall I want to place it in, and then I use my pick lines to actually select the wall boundary. Using tab here, I also make sure I have this lock turned on. That makes sure that my area of reinforcement locks to the area of the wall. And you'll see those little locks telling me that that worked correctly. I also see my major direction in a wall vertical sounds good to me. Okay, so this was built with all number four bars all spaced out at one foot on center. And that's why the tag shows uh, each face each way. If we wanted to, we could switch some of that. So if we go back and select the rebar itself, the area path, we can see that we can change both the exterior major and minor and the interior major and minor. So let's say we want to have a little smaller bars in the minor direction. And we're seeing the tag update automatically. And maybe these are two feet spacing as well. And so there's our tag updated. We might have to do a little bit on the graphics, but it is showing us that we have bars in all directions and their sizing and spacing. We can now go into a section cut and see those bars in 3D. So those are those bars that we built in elevation showing up here in three dimensions. We'll now look at adding in bars into a wall with a door. I'm going to jump into the east view. This is my wall with the door temporarily hide this section cut just to make it a little cleaner to model. Going back to my area reinforcement tool, selecting my wall and also using pick lines, again making sure lock is on. As I hover I hit tab until I see the entire wall including the outline of the door. and then we click. Finishing off that, we'll leave these bars alone. The tag's a little different here because of the door. That could always be modified. Going back into a section cut. We can see the bars are added in that wall. Okay, so then the question comes up, what happens if the door moves? Well, if we add the door first, as I did, and then we add the reinforcement, when we move the door, the reinforcement will update. That's what that whole locking was for. So we'll click on the door, and actually let's look at this in three dimensions first. So I have a three dimension wireframe, and I turn rebar to green. So it should be very clear and easy to see that rebar. Going back into a view to move the door, We'll grab the door itself, slide it over. You'll see the rebar even updated in that view. But just to show it clearly, we'll go back to the 3D view. The view updates, the door shifts, the rebar updates. Now this does not work in the reverse order. If I try to go to the wall that already has rebar in it and add a door, the door will not cut out the rebar. The Revit rebar tool was put in there for the construction side of our industry. The thought, I believe, was once they started adding rebar, the design would be f mostly finished. 
Um, it does work well if the door is already in place. It will not work quite the right way if you try to cut a door after. However, it is quick to edit it. So if you go to level one and we add that door, we can then go back to the west view. We see that we have the rebar coming through and we can see that in that hollow 3D view. If we were to spin it, there is still the rebar cutting, not cutting through our door. Going back to our west view, we can then come in here, select that rebar, edit its boundary, and add in the boundary of our other door. So what I would actually recommend is deleting out the one you have, making sure your lock is on, your pick lines are on, hitting tab until you get that full chain, selecting it, it's fully locked. Now you're just like that first one we modeled. And moving this door will update the rebar after that. So the answer to the question of can the rebar update with the door, the answer is yes, as long as modeled in the proper order. So the order being build the wall, build the door, then put in the rebar locked to the wall in the door. After that, dragging the door will not affect, or the rebar will be affected, it will update. Uh, this also works for slabs. So if we went into the slab level one and we did area reinforcement in the slab, we can hover picking the slab to place it in using our pick lines to find the entire slab. There it is, locking it to the slab, saying finish. If we go back to our hollow view, we'll see we have all the rebar in the slab. If we went back to level one and wanted to cut now a shaft through that slab, we'll see that the rebar is able to update here as well. Just set the heights of this shaft here real quick. All right, and back to the hollow view. You see that the rebar has cut out. So with, with uh, shaft openings, you can model rebar first. As long as it's locked to the slab itself, it will update. All right, hope that helps a little bit, showing you what the rebar tool can do as far as updating door with doors and uh, shaft openings. So in this segment, we'll take a look at the analytical model within Revit and how we can send that out to Autodesk 360 Cloud Analysis and have it return some of uh, the analytical results for us. So this is my design model here. This is what the model would look like when presenting my construction documents. We also have a view of the analytical model, and that is the model here. Uh, this model has been shown with the loading so we have wind load, live load, snow load and all the different load cases are represented in the different colors. Uh, Revit has the tools to add these on the analyze tab and you'll see there's tools for loads, load cases, load combinations and that's how we obtain this type of analytical model. So when we're ready to send this to be analyzed we just go up here to our analyze tab and we can send this to be analyzed in the cloud using our Autodesk 360 subscription. So we'll send that. Now this does take a little bit of time, you know, three to five minutes. I have already sent this before, so I'm going to send this again. And while that's running in the cloud, I'm actually going to jump to my results view. And I'm going to show you the results based on an analysis of the same building I ran earlier today. So again, on the Analyze tab, we can come to our results panel. And it'll bring up a list of all the different results. And you'll see when I went to run that last one, it called it analysis three. I've done two analyses of this same building. Obviously the results come out the same each time. So we can pick either one of these. Uh, we can pick our load case for what we're trying to view. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just do dead load. And then with dead load, we can go ahead and look at any of the different forces you want in any of the different members. So for this demonstration, we'll look at some of the forces in surfaces in surfaces we can go ahead and look at forces in membrane shear we can also go to moments and look at moments in two direction we can look at stresses in multiple directions and we can look at displacements so if we wanted to say look at the stresses 
we can apply that and there's our stress diagram showing the stresses on our concrete slabs. Uh, if we wanted to say look at moments we can go look at that apply that and we can get an idea of what kind of moment we have and we can apply it in both directions. So we can switch the directional span and look at it that way. We could also look at members and force, uh, sorry, forces in different members if you were designing beams or columns. Um, you can get base shears out of this. So if you wanted to look at, say, the forces in the x direction, and we apply those, then down here you're getting your base shear of 42 kips. Now I say 42 kips, and you may ask, where did you get that unit from? Well, if we expand out our results here, we can see that we have different ways to show our forces, uh, what those units will be, and we actually can get some results from our current model showing us maxes and mins. So I think most designers find this the most helpful, that you can just quickly come in here, find it in a list. So that's the analytical model inside of Revit and how we use it with Autodesk 360 Cloud. That concludes our demonstration on the reinforcement tools with inside of Revit structure. I hope that was helpful.